And speaking of the United States, the Indian diplomats have another problem on their hands. This time, it's the United States, and it's a double whammy. America has put a freeze on key visas for foreign workers and imposed restrictions over India's repatriation flights. Our next report brings you the details. Embattled U.S. President Donald Trump is looking for a new enemy. Unable to contain the coronavirus outbreak in America, he is targeting foreign workers. In a major setback against Indian techies, a freeze on key visa categories has been extended. Existing visa holders will not be impacted, but doors to the American dream for new applications are shut for now. This includes the more sought after H-1B visa for highly skilled workers, the H-4 visa for their spouses and the L visa, often used by companies to transfer their employees to the United States. Curbs have been placed on the H-2B visa too. This was used by temporary workers to stay in the United States for up to three years. The J-1 visas used by interns and trainees to stay and work in the US for a short time will face restrictions too. Tuesday brought more bad news for Indians from America. After visa curbs, the Trump administration slapped restrictions on India's one-day Bharat mission. Air India flights sent to America to bring back Indians have been restricted. The US accuses India of unfair and discriminatory practices by barring American airlines from operating similar flights. It seems like Trump is going all out to woo the waters, even if it means miffing an ally. The US president recently kicked off his re-election campaign. Trump held a rally amid the pandemic and called his water-based warriors for stepping out of their homes. We begin our campaign and I just want to thank all of you. You are warriors. I've been watching. I've been watching the fake news for weeks now, and everything is negative. Don't go, don't come, don't do anything today. It was like, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. You are warriors. Thank you. It is this vote bank of loyal supporters that Trump wants to retain. And he is using tried and tested policies to keep them happy. Trump's immigration bans have been a hallmark of his presidency. Now his curbs on skilled Indian professionals has brought the immigration debate on the election agenda. The ban kicks in on the 24th of June. As of April this year, US officials have received around 2.5 lakh H-1B work applications. Out of this, 1.84 lakh applications are from Indian citizens. That's 67% of the total applications. The Trump administration says the freeze is necessary to free up jobs for Americans. It claims that the restrictions will prevent foreign workers from filling up more than 5 lakh jobs. Major US businesses have slammed the new orders. This includes Sundar Pichai, the chief of Google's parent company Alphabet. Trump's critics say he's using the pandemic to push his long-delayed immigration overhaul. But President Trump, with his erratic policies and the latest proclamations, also damaged America's relationship with India. Bureau Report, Vion, World is One. Over to other stories from South Asia. Now, Afghanistan's security forces have witnessed their most violent week so far in 19 years. According to the government, Taliban carried out 422 attacks in 32 provinces in the past week alone. At least 290 members of the security forces have been killed and 550 have been injured. This comes at a time when the government in Afghanistan is preparing to sit down face to face with the terrorist groups in a bid to end the 20 years year-long war in the country. But there are a number of challenges ahead. For instance, on Monday, unknown gunmen killed at least five senior staff members of Afghanistan's Attorney General's office. In another instance, an advocate of Kapisa province was assassinated by unidentified gunmen while he was en route to work. 
Afghanistan's National Security Forces spokesperson said, and I quote, Taliban's commitment to reduce violence is meaningless and their actions inconsistent with their rhetoric on peace. The statement comes at a time when hopes are high for intra-Afghan negotiations, which includes talks between the Taliban, the Afghan government, political factions and even civil society activists. The recent killings have attracted wide condemnation, including from the U.S. Special Representative for Afghan Peace, Zalme Khalilzad. He has called for investigations into the killings and said that such incidents should not deter authorities from making intra-Afghan talks happen. Political experts say these incidents and escalation of violence are attempts to sabotage the Afghan peace process. Taliban's Kabul correspondent Mustafa Kazemi sends us more details from Ground Zero. Let's listen in. In an unprecedented week of violence in Afghanistan, 422 attacks by the Taliban have been recorded by the government, which has resulted in the death of 291 members of the Afghan security forces over the past week. This is happening just in wake of Afghan government's preparation to finally sit down with the insurgent group, the Taliban, and end the 20 years long war in the country. On the cross side of that yesterday, five members of Afghan Attorney General's office were assassinated by unidentified gunmen as they were en route from Kabul city to Bagram prison where most of the Taliban prisoners are held. Sources inside the government tell us unofficially that these five uh, assassinated members were prosecution members and four of them were generals and one of them was a colonel. But officially the government does not uh, comment about what case or dossier they were working on at the time of their assassinations. This could be a serious blow to the Afghan peace process as the Afghan government and other parties involved are trying best to bring the Taliban to peace negotiations and showing a gesture of goodwill by releasing a number of their prisoners every week and every month. On the side of that, just a few hours ago, uh, advocate judge of one of uh, uh, nearby provinces, Kapisa, central province of Afghanistan, was assassinated by unidentified gunmen while he was en route to work. These incidents have attracted global condemnations, including that of Zalmay Khalilzad, the special representative of the United States to Afghanistan, who said in a tweet that no party involved in the Afghan peace process should be deterred by such incidents and the work for bringing peace to Afghanistan will continue. This is Mustafa Kazimir for We Are in Kabul, World is One.